All right, welcome to this quick video about is it incident response or incident management? I'm Steve Armstrong Godwin. I'm the author of the new SANS in Cyber Incident Management course, LDR 553. So in this brief video, I'm going to talk about, you know, does it matter if you've only got IR? Does it matter if you haven't got IM? What is that? What does IM even do and how does that relate to IR? Okay, so let's have a quick, quick couple of slides. There's only about six or seven slides, about four memes. We're good. It's super easy. So one of the first things is there's a lot of People who say IR is IR, IR deals with everything, uh, we can deal with all the types of incidents, that's our job, et cetera, et cetera. That's fine for not, about 99% of all the incidents. However, you do on occasions get times when you have an organizational extinction type event, major ransomware, significant compromise uh, by a foreign or state actor, things like that which can massively impact your organization. And at that point, whilst IR has the best intentions and the best of ambitions, they simply haven't got the capacity. Most organizations, even for a fairly large organization, might have at most 10 people in IR. If you're looking at major incidents, and I've got about 20 years working in incident response and incident management, some of the incidents I've dealt with have had 120, 130 people all supporting that one incident. And IR just hasn't got the capacity for that. And also because as technical specialists, their job is to do the forensics, do the analysis and understand what's actually happened rather than an incident manager who's trying to say, how do I fix this across the enterprise? How do I reduce the, the vulnerabilities that we have from this direct incident? How can I actually deal with all of these problems, hardening, hygiene, and getting other people involved? That's the job of incident management. And like I said, whilst IR can normally deal with that, in most cases that are involving like sort of critical and sort of uh, say organizational extinction type events, the, the IR just haven't got the capacity. The other thing that is, the reason why I flagged this, this up is, and it's a standard question that I have uh, with people who come on my course, the LDR 553. They say to me, is there any pre-reading that I should do? And the thing I will say to them is two things. Read your IR plan and read your IM plan. Most times they come back to me and say, yeah, we didn't have an IM plan. Most times when they finish the course, they say, we need an IM plan. And this is because having been through the major incidents that we deal with on the course, they understand the gaps that is there from the IR playbooks and from the IR plans that they've already developed. And I say that because what I find most organizations have is nothing. They have no IM plans. They have never trained with them. They've never tested them. They've never written them or anything else. So that's why it's good to go out and say, have you got an incident management playbook? Have you ever tried it? Have you ever tested it? Now, People say, that's okay, we're, we're doing incident response in alignment with the, the very good document, the NIST 800-61R2, which is a really good document. The downside is it's really focused on IR. And the one bit that it actually is kind of small on is the, the sort of the recovery aspects. And that's really where I am actually steps in and does a lot of the work. Because incident management's not dealing with the detection or the analysis. It's helping to plan the containment. It's helping to understand what eradication needs to be done with extra resources. But actually the recovery is really where I am comes into its play. Most people that have an IR playbook or an IR plan that is aligned with the NIST have nothing when it comes to IM. How do I know this? Because this little bit here, if I get rid of me, this little bit here, this bit on the left, that is the entirety of how to do eradication and recovery in accordance with the NIST 800-61R2. There's not much there. So what I see in a lot of organizations when I've gone in, and I've been working in IR for over 20 years, uh, both at sort of small and large and multinational international organizations, is that when they have a major incident and they would call me in as a contractor, is that they have no plan for the execs. In fact, the plan ends when IR calls the exec and says, we have a major problem here, we need you to help. And the sad thing is the execs walk in saying, okay, let's get out the playbook, what does it say? And the playbook says, call the exec. They're like, but I don't know what to do now. I've never done this. I've never faced this. I don't know how to put out a press brief to, to tell them about how we've been compromised by a Russian state actor and half our network's encrypted. I don't know how to do that. And a lot of people don't. So I would say to you, so if you haven't got those kind of plans, if you haven't got that kind of playbook, then maybe one of the first things you should do is go off and write one. 
Because in those major incidents, when you have these major problems, you're gonna have IR constantly going, look at this problem we found, look at this vulnerability, the threat actor has done this, the threat actor has accessed this data, the threat actor has exfiltrated this data. And IM is left trying to do the data remediation to try and work out what key certificates, uh, passcodes, etc., are included in that data that's been exfiltrated. They're trying to think about GDPR and other privacy legislation and other regulatory uh, uh, legislation that they need to comply with. They're also trying to think how do they harden the environment? How do they fix the firewall that's got vulnerabilities in it? How do they deal with the VPN that's got vulnerabilities and people who haven't got MFA enabled? Those are the kind of problems that IM will deal with and IR simply haven't got the capacity. So you say, Steve, this is great. This is just like a, a problem you've given me that I didn't know what to do with. What I would say to you is, if you deal with or you work with an incident response team and you haven't got an incident management plan or an incident management team, sit down with your IR team and talk to them about how they would deal with a major incident. In their heads, how would they see that playing out? Consider the kinds of impacts that might be hitting your organization and then plan some major incident exercises to sort of see how you would deal with that. Do a desktop one. They don't have to be live things. We do a simple desktop running through to say, how would we deal with ransomware? How would we talk to people? How would we call people? Where are all our playbooks? Where are, where's our response plan? Can we access that when our network and our active directory is offline? A common thing for ransomware operators to take out is your domain controllers. At that point, all of your single sign-on fails to work. Now you can't access anything. There's a major incident for you to deal with. Once you've identified all your gaps, work out how you're going to close them down. Come up with a list of, of plans to develop, runbooks to come up with, even simple things like understanding how long it takes you to recover if you need to rebuild your entire network. Suppose you've got amazing backups, you've got an awesome backup service, how long will it take you to actually recover all of your critical services to the point where you could actually support your customers going forward? If you don't know how long that is, how can you plan for anything? Those are the kind of things and the kind of exercises that you should put together as part of your incident management plan. And that's why it's different and bigger than IR. If you like this kind of stuff, this is what we do all week long when we do the LDR 553. We look at business email compromise, supply chain compromises, ransomware. We look at how to do root cause analysis, how to brief execs, how to even play with artificial intelligence to help you do faster IM. It's a fun course. We have a single organization that actually runs through the entire, um, entire uh, week that we deal with it. They have multiple types of breaches and we show how in a real world type scenario, things like a lack of confidence in your own security brings doubt into problems. How do you push out a press brief when you have a slight doubt? Are we actually secure? Are we fully secure? Do we know where the attacker's been? These kind of things. It's a fun course, and I think you might like it. So there we go. That is a quick sort of run through on the difference between IR and IM and why it's important to have both. If you like this, do reach out to me. There's my email addresses. There's the SANS email addresses. You can hit me up on LinkedIn or Twitter, etc. if you want to talk about it. We do have regular runs of the course if you're interested. Um, and otherwise, that's it. I look forward to seeing you at an event. Good luck.